Hi folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back to the channel but first of all I hope that you're all safe with the coronavirus crisis and I hope you get through it in good health. Anyhow I'm going to continue making videos and you might remember that about six months ago we started this Pinto engine up for the first time after it's been sitting there for 15 years and we did a lot of checks and you can see it in the videos that I have on my channel and one of the checks was checking the compression on the cylinders and what we noticed was that the last two cylinders were a bit low on compression. There was a big difference between the first two and the last two. And that could happen on any car, basically. So I don't know what the reason is. And in this video, we're going to try to diagnose what is the cause of the lower compression. Now, the first thing I'm going to do now is measure the compression. That's the first thing we're going to do. And then we will do a cylinder leakage test. Now, for both tests, you will need some tools, and they are not expensive and worthwhile, the investment. But we go through all this. So the first thing we're going to do is to start up the engine and let it warm up. So right now, the engine is cold, so let's start it and see if we can get it to go. But as you can tell, it is not running very smooth. It's, it's, it's really shaking a lot. And that's because of the last two cylinders. You can even hear it on the sound. So I suspect still the problem with the compression. So we're gonna start testing that very soon. But first I'm gonna let it warm up. You also might have noticed that the starting was not with a lot of battery power uh, because this car also still have another problem. It has a short or high power consumption somewhere. I don't know what it is, but we gotta figure that out. So I'm gonna let it warm up and then um, we check it out. So I'm gonna measure the temperature on the car because the dials don't work. And once the car is up to temperature, which is around 62 to 70 degrees centigrade, I'm gonna shut it down and we'll start with the compression test. I think it's warm enough now, so now we're gonna start with the compression test. And for that, you need a compression meter. And this is a compression meter, which gives you the pressure in bar and also in PSI, the pressure relief valve. And on the other side, you have the part that fits into the opening of the cylinder head where normally the spark plug is. The only thing you've got to watch out for is that you actually have the right fitting at the end. And this is my original spark plug. As you can see, that's just going to fit nice and make sure that you have the seal on. So let us uh, remove the spark plugs and then fit it. All right, let's do that. And I was marking so it's easier to put it all back later. Otherwise, you have to start checking what cable went where. All right, and then number four. Uh, that doesn't look too good color-wise. It's pitch black. Oh, that's just meaning it's running too rich. Uh, it's a bit the same. Pitch black, running too rich. Now let's do the one that we know we have lower compression. Different color. Not as black as the other ones. It's kind of like it doesn't get enough fuel. And maybe that's what it is. And these are the four spark plugs that I just got out of the engine. Cylinder one, two, three, and four. And what you immediately can see is that the last two cylinders, three and four, are looking completely different than cylinder one and two. And one and two had good compression before, three and four did not. Uh, one and two, I think it's running too rich because it's pitch black, uh, but that's a carburetor adjustment. But the last two is a bit weird. Uh, maybe it's also a carburetor adjustment, but I still suspect a compression issue. So let's now go ahead and measure the compression. But if you do a compression test, do it with a warm engine and have the gas throttle fully open and let it spin about eight compression strokes and then check the reading. Okay, so I need to block the gas throttle fully open. So I'm gonna use a piece of aluminum for that. And hopefully I can stick it in here. There we go. So now that's blocked and fully open. 
All right, so let's put the compression meter up. And you just rotate it by the hose. It doesn't have to go in very tight. You just want to make sure that the seal at the end is closing up the hole where normally the spark plug is. So. That should be enough. And we've got a really good reading of around 12 kilograms, which is great. Let's remove it, and we use it in the next one. All right, cylinder number two. And that is about the same, around 11 and a half to 12 kilograms. But now, we're getting to the suspicious cylinder, cylinder number three. All right, let's try it out. But my God, this is good. I've got also 12 kilograms right now. That was not the case before. Um, that's looking good. So maybe we just have a fuel problem on this one now. But nevertheless, let's try the last one. And now we do the last one. Wow, that's good. That's also 12. So all four cylinders are now having the same or more or less the same reading with about half a kilogram difference. Now that is really good. So we checked all four cylinders and they all measure around 11 and a half to 12 kilograms. Half a kilogram difference between them. And three and four, strangely enough, they measured good. That was not the case when I first cranked up the engine. So maybe because the car had been sitting there for so long, uh, we had some deposits on the valve seats and that's why it was leaking. Nevertheless, uh, we still will do a leak test. And a cylinder leakage test will tell you exactly where the cylinder is losing its compression. It can lose compression through the inlet valve, the outlet valve. You may have corroded valve seats or burn valves, so air will escape. And you will hear a hissing sound, obviously, in the intake manifold or the exhaust, depending on which valve is leaking. It could also leak uh, in between the cylinder and the piston. Uh, that's what we call blow-by and then you can hear it in the carter. So if you pull out the dipstick, uh, where you measure normally your uh, oil level, then you can listen there and it, you might hear a hissing sound. And you can also check in your radiator or your reservoir uh, if you see air bubbles. So these are all areas that you will have to check. Now before you can do a, a cylinder leakage test, you will have to make sure that the cylinders are at top that center at the end of their compression stroke. So you will have to look at your flywheel or your pulley to find out, top that center, and then walk through the different cylinders. And I'm going to take off the valve cover so I can actually check the timing on the valves and see when the piston is at the right compression stroke. And then we will we'll go and measure. Now, you're going to need a few things to do that. First of all, you're going to need shop compressed air. Now, depending on the tool you're going to use, they will tell you how much pressure you can maximum have because be careful with that because you may otherwise blow up the test tool. Now let's have a look at the tool itself. And this is the cylinder leakage test kit. Nothing really special and they are very cheap. Of course, they are not 100% accurate, but they're more than good enough to start diagnosing the problem. You got the two dials and we'll talk about this in a few minutes. And then the hose here, that's where it's going to adapter, which is going into the hole where normally the um, spark plug is sitting. Now it comes with multiple different adapters and this is one adapter and there's another one. But none of them fits because my spark plug is quite different, as you can see. So what I had to do is I had to knock out all the insulation stuff of the spark plug, then clean it up, drill it out, and at the end I created this kind of a setup. You can still see that this is part of a spark plug, and I put it all together, and now uh, I can fit it into this engine. So you might have to do that sometimes. What I'm showing you here is also something you could do on your own. Uh, you could actually knock out all the insulation stuff out of an ordinary spark plug and then have an adapter to it that goes to your compressor and put it at around 40 PSI or something like this. You don't need dials for that. 
and then you can listen to the sounds all around the car as I just explained before. But all right, uh, so now let's see how we're going to use this. The tool itself has an input pressure dial and then a leakage dial. It has a pressure adjustment right here and you need to pull it out to engage it. And the shop compressed air will go in this side. Now for this tool, you got to make sure that you do not exceed 45 to 100 PSI. The pressure and now I'm going to start closing the valve until this needle is to in the set area. There we go. I'm going to give it a little bit more. All right. So now we are ready. Uh, in essence, what has to happen now is that we need to connect this hose now to the cylinder, which is at top dead center. And then we'll see what the leakage is. But let me try to show you that anyhow on how that tool works, because there's a bit of confusion I've seen on many of the YouTube channels on how that is working. Some people claim it's not working. I think it is working. The tool is now calibrated. And if I was to connect my lead that's going into the spark plug hole, it's going to blow by, right? So let me do that. You see that? I have like 100% leakage. And that's normal because it is open here, right? I mean, nothing stops it. But see, if I put my finger on there and I can block it completely, then I have no leakage. Uh, if it has a bit of leakage, see, and I'm letting my finger go. So how that, this is how that works. So you will see that a decent engine is around 10 to 20%, you know, around that area. That's still acceptable. Anything below that, below 20%, Mm, that's not that good. I know it shows still green here, but I, I wouldn't like that. I would try to stay at least around 20 or below. So let's uh, check this out. So first of all, let us take the valve cover off now. We're going to start with cylinder number one and I'm going to spin the motor around in its normal rotation direction until I'm at the compression stroke of cylinder number one. Now for that I have a marking on the pulley which is top that center and so let's see. Well that certainly is not it because you can see the exhaust valve going down so now the piston is coming up. Now piston will come down in a minute and the intake valve will open up. It's coming back up. So now we started the compression stroke. There we go. And I'm watching my top dead center on my pulley. And that's where we should be. I will do a quick check with a screwdriver and the and feel where the piston is. It's still coming up a little bit. Yeah, that's it. You want to have it at its top that center because if you put some pressure in, otherwise the engine may turn around. And both valves should be rocking. There should be play. If there's no play, then you have a problem with your valve clearance. So let's put the meter up and see what it gives us. The meter is calibrated. And what I see right now, let me just see if we're in the right spot. Yeah, we were. And what I see for the moment is that we have actually quite some leakage apparently on the cylinder. We had a good compression, but still, I can hear a hissing sound. So, guys, I'm going to let you listen to that hissing sound. And there is an opening here in the back where the oil goes back into the carter. And I'm going to let you listen there.
and I think that's quite distinct. Despite the fact that cylinder number one has a good compression, we have a poor reading. Now, the sound that you hear is what we call blow-by. It is actually the air which is in the compression chamber, which is escaping in between the piston and the cylinder. Most likely because worn-out segments or the gap of the segments is aligned to each other, that are possibilities, but we know that this specific cylinder is having that issue. I'm going to show you now uh, another measurement where I'm going to fake a little bit, whereby you could detect a leak of your intake valve and then a leak on your exhaust valve. So I'm going to test them one by one and then we'll find out at the end what the end result is. But first of all, I'm going to show you what the effect is if you had a bad intake valve. I have simulated a faulty intake valve by leaving it a little bit open while I'm doing the test. And then you could actually check the intake manifold or your carburetor and you should hear a hissing sound. So let's see if that is the case or not. I'm going to take the microphone off so you can actually hear it. Now I will have to open up the, um, the gas throttle to let you hear it better. So. Here we go. So each time I open up the gas throttle, you can actually hear the air coming out of the carburetor. So that would be a sign of a faulty intake valve. Now we will simulate a faulty exhaust valve. Now the exhaust valve is slightly open and that would be the simulation of a faulty exhaust valve seating. Maybe the valve is burned. And the way to check that is to listen at the exhaust. And here's the exhaust pipe. And I'm going to put the microphone in there so you can hear it. And hopefully it picks it up. I can actually hear it. If the reading is poor and you don't hear a hissing sound in your carter or in the intake manifold or the exhaust, then you might want to check for air bubbles into your cooling system. Or you might have a leak between the two cylinders because your head gasket is blown and then you might hear a sound inside the cylinder next to the one that you're testing. So let's, uh, check, let's check cylinder number two. And you can see cylinder number two is actually a lot better. It has a bit of blow-by, but not as much as cylinder number one. That up. Of course, now the piston is not in the right space. We have the piston top that center for cylinder number three. You can see the exhaust valve now closing. Now we have the intake valve that starts to open up. Now we get the compression. And there we go. And you can see we are now at top that center and we have the same kind of blow by. And the last cylinder is a bit better, but still moderate, so not really good. So what's now the final verdict on this engine? We did a compression test and all four cylinders are reasonable okay. There's like half a kilogram difference between them, 11 and a half to 12. All four about the same. Now that's good. However, once we started doing the test with the leak tester, we noticed on all four cylinders about the same amount of blow-by. So that means that the segments of all four the pistons probably are worn out, or the cylinders are worn out. And actually you can see that when the engine is running, when you check on the cap on top of the valve cover, you can actually feel it. It's blowing a bit. You actually feel it. And that's the blow-by. Um, so I might put new segments on this. I'm not sure yet, but I have a spare Pinto motor sitting on the side anyway, which is as good as brand new. So I might fit that one because I have to remove this engine anyhow because the clutch is still stuck. So guys, thank you for watching. And I hope you really enjoyed this video as much as I did. And soon I'll be back with an old rusty video because meanwhile I've got the parts. I'll see you later. Bye.